Hi everyone, my name is Anne Marie. Welcome to Card Making Project 525. Today brings our Shaker Card Week to a close, and today's card is a little bit different and it's kind of special because it's a double shaker card and it's showing you a completely different way to make a shaker card. Everything I do here is I should put in a detailed list on my blog, so please be sure to check it out. All the ingredients for everything that we've used will always be listed on there with item links if I can list them and item numbers if I've got them. So please be sure to have a look. There's always lots more photos on there as well. Now I do love hearing from you and I love receiving your photos and seeing what you've been crafting. And I think it's great that we're getting new viewers all the time. And I just want to include those, you know, don't hesitate to contact me, message me on Facebook send me um, an email direct through my blog it is nice hearing from you and don't forget to get your questions in because we're going to have a question video at some point now i've not had that many questions in just lately we started off and there was quite a few but they've trickled down again so and we need quite a lot for a full sort of video question and answer session for your crafting we'll keep it crafting rather than personal so why don't you sit back and relax and let's have a look at today's gorgeous shaker card for today's project we're going to be using the Anna Griffin Lace Edge Border Die from the Lace Edge Cut and Emboss Set. We're only going to be using the ornate layer, um, we're not using the shadow layer. And then the ornate layer I've actually die cut it three times using one of the papers from the Charlotte collection. It's this one with the squares on it. So if you've had this paper collection and you're wondering what to do with this paper, because it's not a full floral design or a smaller pattern design this is an ideal option for you so I've die cut it three times because we actually want five or six strips of the actual ornate lace then we're also using the Anna Griffin 22 clear birthday rubber stamps now, for anybody that might not have this set because it's an older set, you could substitute it with any of the stamps that you maybe have from the Treasury. They have some great sentiments in there. Or for any of the other stamp sentiment sets. I'm using the Happy Birthday, Dear Friend. I'm using the Wishing You the Happiest Days of Your Life stamp and the Make-A-Wish stamp. So we're using three stamps from that for our final shaker card. Now with this card we're going to make the shaker first because this I would say is quite a complicated card and um, very selfishly I want to get the shake, shake a bit out of the way. We're also going to be doing some paper folding. Now the first thing that we need for our shaker is the front of it. Now for the front of it I've die cut an oval from the lovely layers collection from Anna it's roughly about an inch wide I've used a set of nesting oval dies which um, are, mine are actually by a firm called press cut I don't know that they're still available um, I think they go under the label of crafts too as well however there's so many nesting dies available and you don't have to use an oval shape it just so happens for this card it's going to work and this card I think I don't know if I've just said this but it's it is quite a complicated card but at the end of it you'll think oh wow that's clever so you've got to bear with me you might have to sit back and try not to nod off for this so I've die cut an oval with an oval centre to give us an oval frame and then I've die cut all my lace edges and then I've cut them in half to be able to get lace strips and you've already seen the paper that I've used now the paper that I used with the squares on gives a great effect when you die cut it with this um, die because the gold makes it look like you've gold embossed it so I've cut it three times to get my strips because then I've cut it in half I've got red tape on the actual top of the strip I've just simply cut it in half I've not done anything fancy to it and then I can start adding this to the edge of my oval and I'm not even going to go really carefully I'm simply going to fold it roughly every inch and just kind of scrunch it 
and make it work, if that makes sense. All we're doing is to build in the fancy edge and I'm, I'm not looking for perfection because I'm really not a perfectionist with something like this. And second strip, again, just adding it. Because I want to just show you, give you the ideas and then you can think, well, I am a perfectionist. And I'm going to measure it and I'm going to do this, that and the other. Well, that's fine. I just think this works for a random fold. And you don't have to be too careful. And it's going to look great. So we'll just add the last one. And you can take it from behind. Or in the front and just keep going with it there and the last fold fold it in there we go and there we have our fancy oval with our fluted lace edge and I think because our shaker is um, quite complicated. I think that's going to work really well. So next we need to add acetate to this. So we're going to want some flat tape on the back of it. So this card, this is why I said about sitting down and uh, relaxing, because you're going to get to see this one from start to finish. Um, I think it helps to see the whole process sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. I, I think sometimes there's no need for you to actually see all the individual components. Um, but this one, because it's kind of complicated, it'll just make you think a little bit. Okay, so now I can take all the tape back away and we can add the acetate. The acetate I'm using is 300 microns thick. It's quite thick. I think I've touched on the fact before that you can use whatever you prefer. I prefer just that little bit thicker. Um, kind of makes it look like glass. And then maybe you want to use your packaging, the plastic um, packets that paper comes in, something like that, because that would work. So now I've taken the tape edge away, I can add the acetate. So I've cut an oval and I've just cut it out. I haven't die cut it or anything. And I'm just going to simply position that over the back of our oval lace edge so you can see that in the center and I can put that to one side because that's now ready for us to make the base now this is where the complicatedness comes in because it's a double shaker is this one I don't know if I mentioned that I've cut an oval in ivory cardstock that's roughly the size of the actual, I don't know if you can see this, if I lay it over the top, it's the same width as the large oval that we've got for the front of the card. And it's just a plain ivory oval. Then, this is where it gets complicated. I've taken a piece of scrap ivory cardstock and I've stamped on it. I've stamped using the 22 clear rubber stamps. I've stamped Happy Birthday Dear Friend on it. And then I've scored it with roughly half a, half a centimetre, so maybe a quarter of an inch, to make a fold. So it gives it a little bit of um, a box side, like a book. 
Can you see that? So it kind of gives it, it makes it a, not a matchbox because it's not as deep. But we score it at both sides just to give it the edge. Now I've got phone tape in the middle because I want to keep it to this shape. And I've also got flat tape on the outside of it. So I'm going to fold those over and that creates like a little box tube. This is going to sit on my oval. So I want it to be the right size. So I've taken a pencil and I've just drawn roughly along the sides of where the side of the oval is. And I'm just simply going to trim that away on both sides, like so. There we go. And that will fit on the oval shape. So I'm going to stick that down with the tape that's already on the back. And I'm just checking if I've got, I've got two layers of tape. So I'm going to add that through the center like so. Then I'm going to take the tape that we use for making the shakers. And I'm just going to check the positioning. And I can go roughly from here all the way around like that. Taking the tape and then cutting it. And then we're going to add a second layer. So I need to take the tape of this side away. Take the top of it off. There we go. And then another row of tape on top. So this is the bit that's kind of like you're going to be sat there thinking, oh, what else is on? So run the second layer of tape round, making sure we've got no gaps. And when we get to the edge, we want it sealed like that. Save your waste, then you can use it for making your decoupage, etc. Then we're going to do exactly the same on the bottom. And add the tape to two the sections, last piece of tape now and pull the top of that one off. I hope you're all still awake, <laughs> this could be worth it in the end and if you're fast forwarding me I know who you are. Okay so second piece of tape there we go. Now, it doesn't have to look neat because you know it's hidden behind the edges. But you just need to make sure you've got no gaps. So we've got the two pieces of tape at either top and bottom. And then we can peel away the top of our tape. Now always peel away the top of your tape before you add in your glitter or your sequins whatever you're going to use because if you do it this way and then try and peel your tape away it's not really going to work so next I just need to add some flat tape either side of the sentiment just to make sure that it's going to stick there as well so that there's no gaps and then I can peel the top of that away and 
there we go so then we can decide what we're going to put in the two areas do we want the same thing in both or do we want two separate things well I'm thinking I want two different things I want sequins in the bottom so you don't have to put many in and then I want crystals in the top. So we can pour a few crystals in the top. Maybe, if, no, we'll have a lot of crystals. Then we can pop the top over. And I can see a hair. So we'll get rid of the hair. Uh, we've already made the top. And we're just popping that over and that covers the seams and the joints and there press it down we'll check it works oh how cool so the one thing that i've spotted is the foam could have been a little bit higher for the top uh, for the bottom so that we can see more of the shape and sequins but it still works it looks great and it's just so different how different is that okay finish this off with a little girl frame now i've cut this out of anna's girl cardstock and it's just simply a little bit smaller um than the large oval and I'm just adding a little bit of glue on the back because it's quite thin but I think it's going to finish off the oval perfectly so there we go add that just to the edge of the inside and oh how pretty Okay, so now I can just set that to dry and we can create our card. So our base card is a 7x5 inch card from my friends across the pond, a 5x7. I'm going to use my bone folder to make sure I've got a nice sharp score along the edge. I've stamped on the back and I've added my name, so be sure to use your Anna Griffin handmade by stamps. And the base layer for the inside is just a piece of ivory cardstock and I've taken just a die cut of the lace edge and I've stenciled through it so I've just picked up that pattern on the edge I tell you my new blending brushes I can't stop using them so I've just done that on the top and the bottom I've got double sided tape on the back so that it's going to sit nice and flat in the actual card there we go and then I've taken two of the squares from do you remember the charlotte paper that we've used for the lace edge on the front I've taken two of the squares and I've simply cut them in half diagonally to create corners and I'm going to add these just in each of the corners you'll be able to get yours a little bit straighter because you're not looking at it through a camera lens and it's all distorted so there we go there's our four corners and then for the centre I've cut an oval in ivory cardstock and I've used two of the birthday stamps wishing you the happiest of days and make a wish and this is kind of um, a what not to do actually I want to show you something a big tip here so I've used um, a permanent ink and I like I well I like mixing my inks and for some reason there was a lot of black on the red so it's ended up where it's darker 
on the first stamp than the second. So it's kind of cleaned itself up by the second stamp. So just remember to clean your ink pads and clean your stamps or she'll end up like me. So then I can add the oval into the centre and we've got some room to write on and it's just so pretty. It's going to work so well with the outside of the card which we can now create using my bone folder for the edge and the base layer is actually, so I don't waste anything, the lovely layers layer that I've cut the oval from. You can see how that's just come out there. I've got flat tape on the back of it and where I've cut the oval out, don't worry about that, you won't see it because we're covering that over and it's just going to work really well. So it's actually just one layer of cardstock that I've used and not wasted anything. So I'll pop that onto the front of our card like that. And then I've got four corners again that I've cut out from the Charlotte collection paper. And I'm going to add these to all four corners of our card. Just turn it so I can see it. And that's the final one. There we go. And then we can add our shaker to the center. And that is going to hide the aperture that we've cut for the frame, for the shaker. And we can pop that over the center and press it down like that. There we go. Then I've got a couple of flowers from the quotes and flower sticker set and just simply to add a little bit of extra along the edge. I'm going to just add one there and where shall we add the second one? If we add one at one side of the oval like that and then I'm going to go with the corner. There we go. And then I'm going to finish it off with a little gold bow just at this side. So I've gone from my classic triangle of three items. And that is our card finished. And how cool is that? How different is that as well? It's just something, a, a different way to make your shaker cards, making them really pretty and you could use it in so many different ways. So you could use different things to the sequins or the crystals, you could use the Anna Griffin confetti dies because the gaps are big enough to have something a little bit bigger. You could use stars or glitter, whatever you like. Stands up perfectly, the inside matches the outside perfectly and it's just so pretty. You wouldn't need extra packaging because you've actually only got a couple of layers on there and I would say that would go in a normal envelope. But don't forget it's a 5x7 so I'm from my friends across the pond and even if you wanted to do a different shape you could easily adapt it. Now I know today's been a bit of a longer one but I wanted you to see the full process of how to create that double shaker and I think it looks really good. So I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it's given you a few ideas and made you think outside the box. So check the blog uh, for extra photos and I would just like to say thank you so much for watching. I shall see you next time.